Hello there commanders and welcome back to National Cap. We are in a second battle between Russia and China, round 4, match 1. So, Russia looking to keep uh, being undefeated, to stay undefeated in the tournament. So far, so good. And we are on Oasis, so Apis Grania in the previous round was probably um, the choice of the Chinese team. So now we are on the Russian favorite on Oasis. Anyway, let's see. What the Russian team is up. No, haven't really deployed anything on D, but they are sending the runes over there. Um, sending multiple multiple units, including archers to C and pikes and cavalry. And sending a lot of units here on top of the hill. Um, China actually looking to mostly mimic uh, the movements of the Russian team. Sending repeating crosses. Both teams having repeating crosses here on top of the hill. Both teams also having archers plus repeating crossbows on their rosters. No cavalry on the Chinese team though. Uh, only double cavalry on the Russian team. See pikes here deployed. We're going to cut down very, very nicely some uh, Russian infantry. And uh, this is also getting wrecked by repeating crossbows. Repeating crossbows are also attacking the pikes. So Chinese repeating crossbows need to position and try to uh, defend uh, against the uh, enemy repeating crossbows. Uh, they are at the moment not doing so, preferring to focus killing on uh, on killing infantry themselves. So spill are being thrown on them. Uh, C under control of the Russians, but it's still quite a while until it becomes unlocked. Only two units defending D uh, on the side of the Russians over here. Chinese have their archers over here, not, not, not the very best unit to send in a flank like that. These archers definitely could have been sent here and some of the infantry to the other flank. But well, that's what the Chinese team has elected. They couldn't possibly know what the Russian team is going to do anyway. The Russian team actually leaving C, only one unit over there. Sending a multiple reinforcements to flank the Chinese team around over here in B. And if they manage to deny the healing zone, they are sending the cavalry. That is going to be a huge advantage to them. Yep, the cavalry already taking course on top of the healing zone. Let's see, go back to D, let's check up on it. The archers still not really able to do much. They need to find a proper position to not do a shit on a friendly fire. There we go, now they're behind. There we go, finally start shooting. Barrage into the rear of the spears should do a lot of damage if. Okay, no barrage, okay, that's fine. You don't have to use it. You don't have to win faster. That's okay. Cavalry approaching from the Russian team. That is, Kibio will be able to charge in an oath. Uh, the Chinese team, multi other spearmen actually. That is interesting choice. So nothing that will be really able to kill that oath cavalry very, very quickly. But it still will be relatively quickly nonetheless, as spears are spears after all. In the meantime, Russia here um, denying the healing zone quite nicely from the Chinese, as they are now in retreat. Um, yep, the Chinese tactics over here on this flank weren't too good and they have been quite wrecked. So the teams are going again to trade the points here on Oasis. God damn deja vu. Everybody seems to go for the same tactic on this map. Just rush one of the flanks. It happens to be the opposite flanks. Although, actually, Chinese have sent like sizable force over here on this one. They just, they just lost. So, yeah. There's that. So anyway, the Russian team are now pushing into B. C actually is going to be contested by the uh, Chinese team. They have captured, uh, well, they are going to capture D any time now. Um, B still being contested ever so slightly by the Chinese team, but they won't be able to do much. One of their players would need to completely die and then respawn over here. The Pikes have <coughs> recalled back to the base and healed up there, but there's no way they will make it in time on top of B. So yeah, B is going to be captured by the Chinese team, but they are slower on the rotation than the Chinese team. The Chinese team have already captured D, healing up very nicely on the way to C, and multiple units from the Chinese team, mainly archers, already on the way to C as well. China, uh, sorry, uh, Russia doing the same, sending units that have they have healed up on E towards C, as obviously uh, B doesn't need any more reinforcements. Now the uh, ranged units from the a Russian team just going forward. They really don't have anything to be afraid of. Thank you for supporting my camera. They really don't have anything to be afraid of as there are no the cavalry units on the <clears throat> on the Chinese team. While the uh, range team uh, range units on the Chinese team need to be aware of any cavalry presence. That cavalry is right now healed up on top of B, making its way towards C, trying to maybe um, well either just off on top of the point. Uh, doesn't really need to. Uh, the Russian infantry has made its way. Chinese failed to um, prevent it from getting out of the point. They do have their arches where they're ripping roses as well over here. 
uh, the Russian range units are nowhere near being just stopped by the <clears throat> fight in the shade Leonidas. So that is going to take quite a while. The cavalry is going to try to make their way. Yep, those are... S what the hell is this charge? Yep, they definitely... Oh. <laughs> okay, pulling out a dogbird over there. Charging into a wall very, very nicely. Um, okay, another cavalry trying to get another charge into the rapine crossbows, but now prevented by the swords. Also prevented from getting out of the point. Now they will try to squeeze past. That is going to cause them quite a while. The charge stopped as well as the center of the unit gets teleported. Well, that charge would have worked, sort of, um, if the center of the unit wasn't teleported mid charge. Um, so there we go. More and more Chinese uh, units getting sent on top of sea. So yeah, the Chinese are looking very, very. Uh, good for now uh, in terms of capturing C but as I have learned <laughs> the point isn't captured until it's captured everything can happen just a single unit making its way on top of uh, C contesting it for a little while for their team and buying time for reinforcements to arrive can really change the course of the battle as well I, I have been on a receiving end of this like yeah yeah C should be captured and then it wasn't the very very last second somebody made its way over there. Speaking of s someone who can make its way over there, uh, his way over there are those spikes for example as they're now mercilessly pushing forward. They have been flanked, a left and a right flank is the hold line available. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but either way, either way it hasn't been casted. So there we go. See as the unit of the Russians have routed above it. Can it be f captured? There we go. Uh, sword unit from the Russian team was too slow and now the Chinese team is looking very very nicely the healing zone now available for the chinese team over here nobody can really go there and heal up but somebody could respawn and then the russian team could be flanked also the uh, chinese team is flanking over here as well not looking that strong but the uh, russian ranged units are over here in the tall grass if the chinese unit uh, if the chinese team had some cavalry units they could really, really punish those regions now, but they don't. And well, arguably, the lot of infantry they brought, no, uh, electing not to bring any cavalry, might have contributed to them actually capturing C. So that is looking really, really nicely, committing heavily to that infantry meta, and giving the Russians some taste of their own medicine. Now, a very fresh unit is going to make its way on top of the healing zone, trying to enable the healing for the rest of the team on top of the healing zone associated with C. The Russians, obviously, as they run out of front lines, they need to pull back the range units. Wait, why not use Sight of Dragon? You are Zhugaliak. Oh, maybe it is on cooldown. Anyway, the studio being used here, Germanicus, obviously. So all the uh, Sight of the Dragons or the Hands, yeah, you can cast it. The studio is at the studio. It is going to force you back. Now, oh, okay, don't, don't turn the back of the studio, but yeah, whatever. Uh, now, <clears throat> the Sudo has been disabled by engaging in melee, but the Russian rangers have been forced back far away enough so that the Chinese team can heal up over here at C, and now they will be looking to launch a counter-attack on B. The Russian team is actually fighting um, the Chinese quite far ahead, away from their own point, away from their own healing zone. Uh, the Chinese spikes are making their way on top of B, but B is going to be reinforced by the Russian spears as well. The pikes are going towards C. Well, it's on Russia to do something. They're trying to do something over here on D. Four units now have healed up over on the base and now being sent over to D. Fifth and sixth units doing that as well. China is sending some reinforcements. They do not have cavalry, so they don't have any sort of fast response units. Not even light barbarian units. No, no folksmen, no dogs whatsoever. Just heavy units all across the board. So we'll see. If Russia recaptures D, then they will have uh, three points to the Chinese too. But the Chinese team is also looking to maybe capture B as a trade for D. Pike units here, Pike duel. Uh, but one Pike is one rank ahead, so that is going to be an advantage for them. Hold the line being used. So yeah, definitely an advantage for the Russian Pikes. A very nice volley here by the Chinese archers though. But it's only one unit versus three. So yeah, not reacting time, not dodging, and that's definitely not the trade he wants to make. Yeah, these archers are all over the place, but Triple Barrage has been used by the Russians, so now the Chinese team can definitely heal up and push them back a little bit, if they played smartly. B now being captured, actually, as the Russians just sort of retweeted, and now they're re retweeted, retreated, there we go, uh, retreated from B, and trying to make it back now, in a different angle, different approach, trying to deal with those spies that they can't really find them 
<clears throat> an answer to, but a good answer is uh, <laughs> Barash from Repeating Crosses. Find the shade being used to find the shade uh, being used to deny the damage from the Repeating Crossbows. But well, once you're out of Pike Phalanx, your melee capabilities are not very good, and that unit is going to get uh, go down. So uh, the Russians are going to stay in control of B for now. And they're also looking quite well here, trying to get um, a D back. China is sending their units, they have the healing zone though. So even though the Russians are looking quite good uh, over here, quite well, doing quite well, as long as the Chinese team manages to heal up. Ooh, that's all three units being brought back over here. Yeah, as long as they make their way onto D, they're fine. One of them even being sent to C. So yeah, there are no threats really. Uh, three units here being sent by the Russian team, all uh, pretty much almost dead. That's Miltiades, right? Yep, Miltiades can use fear over here. A reflank applied. Is the fear available? Well, it may be on cooldown, or somebody might just not be paying attention. And yeah, the Russian team being forced to go all the way back to the base, trying to heal as not even all the units are disengaged, so they cannot use the recall function. So really uh, good for the Chinese there looking to stay in control of D as well. B contest has been started again by one unit in Testudo. Yep, so the Archers are not really going to do much. There we go. Testudo denied by melee engagement. So both teams looking to stay in control of their points. But well, this time it is an advantage for the Chinese team as they are controlling three points to the Russian two. And both teams contesting one point each. The Russian contest of D is going to be uh, lifted. Same case uh, here for uh, the Russian team lifting the Chinese attack onto B. So yeah, now we have a little bit of a breather as both teams are trying to find a way back into the game. Well, Russia is trying to find a way back to the game. China looking to stay ahead in points. All you need to do is just hold D as it is under no threat, really no healing zone close to it. Um, yeah, the closest is really the base. So D is going to be very difficult to capture. So the Russian team really needs to bank onto taking C. They do have a healing zone over here, uh, which also is nicely positioned to sort of deny healing over here. So it offers some kind of a still fair contest for C. And they do have the, um, the heal, so they can go into the Tolgers over here. It is right now controlled heavily by the Chinese team. So yeah, the Russian team is going to have quite some difficulties getting back into this battle, into the game. But the points aren't that far ahead. China only 250 points ahead uh, of the Russian team. Everything can still happen. And now I am really, really getting flashbacks uh, from the tournament. Every time we are in Oasis, somehow this scenario keeps occurring over and over and over again. And unless the Spanish team decides to go for base capture. But yeah, uh, well, Sun Tzu has managed uh, to get C in the end from the position on the hill. Um, will the Russian team be able to do so and stay undefeated? We will see. Charging in here, trying to get the repeating crossbows, but being stopped by uh, Chinese swords. And a huge attack from the front onto uh, the Chinese held C. And now if we look at the area, actually advantage to Russia, sort of, as the Chinese team is trying to attack B at the same time. Pike Phalanx here being used to force the Spears back and this time no repeating crossbows, no archers really to do with that. And the Pikes are supported by their own melee units. So we'll see how much they can do, how much they can achieve. Actually half of the HP down already. Pikes are definitely not uh, messing around. But some kind of miscoordination here, just exposing the reflank of Pike Phalanx. Not very good idea. Then again, Pikes can just still spin to win. Uh, Russian archers being sort of caught out of position. They cannot stop uh, to shoot the repeating crossbows and the archers. Oh, well, they can, but then they will get charged. So one or the other, pick one. Uh, the repeating crossbows of the Chinese team have been charged. Finally, found the charge. Uh, Russian cavalry found a charge into the Chinese uh, ranged units, but it wasn't that effective. Although I don't see one of the repeating crossbow units. Yep, it's dead. So maybe it has been uh, killed by the. Uh, <clears throat> By the archers or the cavalry, either way, uh, the archers, the Russian archers, are also going down. One last unit trying to run away, probably trying to recall as soon as it escapes the radar. But it is being pursued by the Chinese uh, archers as well. C actually has been flipped. There we go, massive, massive attack from the Russian team, and the Chinese team has been forced back. And just like that, C has been captured. 
So, well, now the Chinese team, it is on Chinese team to try to go back and get back into the game. B, almost, almost captured. Healing zone is going to be denied. Only two units with barely any HP uh, being left on top of uh, B. Well, one of them is only on top of B. But Pike Phalanx isn't very good at finishing off units. It's very good at killing down and very, very quickly uh, units with full HP. But once they're down, just disable the Pike Phalanx. They're below 10. Just, just drop them. I mean, they do have hold the line for the time being. So maybe trying to just kill them the good old-fashioned way is going to work. Spin to win is... No, actually there's no spin to win. Pike Phalanx has been disabled. Yep. There we go. Surrounded and cut down. There we go. B is now being <coughs> flipped. <coughs> Can the Russians respawn anything here? Well, one uh, player is dead, but that is uh, the one that has been just killed. So it is 30-40 seconds for him until he responds, depending on how much XP he had. I didn't really pay attention to that. So the Chinese, despite losing C, are still going to stay ahead. Three points to two, but the dynamic has been changed. The contest for C is not really be a factor anymore, I believe. So now the Chinese team needs to hold D. And with the access to the healing zone for C, um, yep, the healing zone is much closer for um, <clears throat> for the Russian team, and the healing zone over here is quite easy to deny, especially if you're pushing from C. Unlike here, when it's uphill struggle, so it's very uh, ha much much harder to counterattack this way. So the Russian team is oh definitely has tools available, right? Just respawn over here at C, use this healing zone to push into D. Looks like that's what they're doing. And that is my analysis of what the Russian team should do at the moment. And well, looks like that's what they are doing. They need to obviously hold C, as now the Chinese team will be able to heal up over here. It's not a really good spawning zone over here, the base is kind of closer. So yeah, but as the Russian team pushes here into D, attacking C is going to definitely leave up some pressure. Attacking E is also a possibility for the Chinese team. But again, as long as the Chinese team can just stay in control of D, that's fine for them. That's going to be hard to do though. So we're looking at a possibly very dynamic battle. Six units of ranged, um, <coughs> of Russian ranged units over here. There we go. Uh, that, yeah, that sentence didn't go that well. Whatever. Well, this is um, Sula, most likely, I think. Maybe Scipio, but either way. No access to the studio. Range is actually focusing on the units on top of D. Uh, rightfully so. But. The Russians just don't have millions in here. They are putting the millions on top of C as the Chinese team is forcing them to respond. A little bit of mismanagement from the Russian team, to be honest. Like they should put the range units over here and just some uh, melee units to hold the point and then use the melee units to attack and hold D. But they're not doing that, so the Chinese team is going to stay ahead. Very nice. And even though it's Sula or Scipio or whatever, um, well, it's still infantry, it's still pushing towards the arches, and the arches need to respect that they need to run away. And well, they will they are going to deal with that, but that is buying a lot of time for the Chinese team to regroup and reinforce D and even keep attacking C. C is still contested, looking actually pretty nice for the Chinese team, but the Russian cavalry is being used well, although probably no charge available. They must have messed up their charge again. And repeating crosses and arches are going to cut that cavalry down sooner or later. But it is also forcing them away, buying the time for the Russians to reinforce C. But Russians are not going to be content with status quo. E now actually being captured as Spears running away. Okay, now they have realized that E is actually being captured. So there we go, they're back in the position. Pike Phalanx, fine. Oh, there we go, the last second cast. There we go. Maybe it was a trap all along. Shield bash as well to add insult to injury. And well, another unit of spears is making their way there. So B, uh, <coughs> rather E, is not going to be captured anytime soon as the Chinese team. Well, they're sending one unit of swords of reinforcements, but it is definitely not enough to just capture a point. Healing zone over here on C being denied by Pike Phalanx. It is being used, so there we go. That is going to be very nice for the Chinese team. As they are now sending back, they have dealt with the cavalry and the <clears throat> sword units that have been attacking their backline. They're actually just ignoring them. They, they, they can actually do that. Four, four soldiers, two soldiers, they're not going to do much damage. All they need to focus is just clearing the infantry. The archers are going to get in their way though. Going to deal quite a lot of damage. One of the units has XP advantage. So Repeating Crossos trying to close distance. Not really going for that. They, they're really actually ignoring the archers. They, all they need to do 
is kill that infantry down. Once the infantry is down, the sea capture can start for the Chinese team as well. The Russian <coughs> archers can obviously stand inside the point, but it's not going to last for long. But the Russians have managed to respawn multiple units over here now that they have dealt with the pikes. They're no longer having their uh, healing zone denied. D actually is under no pressure as the Russian team is forced to reply to the Chinese pressure on top of C. Actually, the re reinforcements that were coming are going to be stopped, but not ahead of the point. Cavalry is also making their way, and now Cavalry is going to finish off the <coughs> repeating crossroads that the archers have laid out the foundations for. China is going to reinforce C with their melee units coming from B. Also, more melee units and archers coming from D. So yes, yeah, status quo is going to be upheld, sort of. <clears throat> being forced by the Chinese team. Chinese team actually contesting both C and E, which means zero points per second gained by the Russian team, and the Chinese team is now 1,000 points ahead, only 600 points away from victory, and they're gaining 3.3 points per second. D, not going to be contested anytime soon, the cavalry can do that, but it's definitely not going to win. B could be contested, but nothing remotely close. So yeah, Chinese team is sprinting ahead to victory, looking to deal the first defeat to the Russians in this tournament. But it's still not done yet. The Russian team could potentially go back, but at this moment it is going to be very, very difficult. I think they had it. I mean, they had three points uh, at some point in the battle, but then mismanagement, um, really mismatching the units, sending wrong units to wrong places to wrong points at the wrong time. And well, mistakes by the Russian team are being punished by the Chinese quite successfully. E <coughs> contest has been denied, so China no longer contesting it. That unit of Pike Phalanx is going to be flanked, still trying to spin to win. And oh, Pikes, the Pikes can do that, they're quite fast still. And running around them takes a lot more time than them just sort of retreating and rotating. Pikes also holding B, so yeah, Russia is going to. Uh, find some difficulties in trying to contest. Well, D is contested, so only 2.2 points per second. Well, A is locked, right, until B, uh, D is flipped, so they will always get just 1 point per second from that, or 1.1 1, 1 .1 rather, <clears throat> because they have control over two other points. So, Russian team now sending attack over to B, trying to slow down the Chinese point gain. Um, D contested, but that unit is going to die any second now. Other one being sent. Uh, well, two more actually, but yeah, they're not going to make it. The rush, uh, sorry, the Chinese uh, repeating crossbows and archers are definitely going to stop them in their tracks. And now again, 3.3 points per second by the Chinese team, 250 points away. Pikes are going to stop the Russian team ahead of the point, so no contest there, unless this sword unit can make it. Yep, the, actually the pike unit is just retreating, allowing them, yeah, sure, come ahead and contest. Uh, we are going to win anyway, a little bit later, but whatever. Um, they would rather be comfortable here. Yeah, they're in a very weird formation at the moment, but it doesn't matter, pikes are pikes. <laughs> they're going to win anyway. Um, yep, yeah, Seacon is still going on. Uh, Chinese team throwing units after units, just denying the healing, um, sorry, denying the point gain for um, the Russian team. Russia team can't really do anything. The, yeah, sure, their ranges are sort of uncontested by any pressure f coming from uh, the cavalry, but just sheer power of having more infantry and just two more units of infantry was really enough to secure the Chinese um, victory. Although that and also quite a lot of Russian mistakes are being made in this battle. So it is nice to see that they are not really undefeated. And, speaking of undefeated, the only undefeated team remaining in the tournament is Ukraine, as they are going to go against France, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, let me quickly check up on that once the battle ends. <clears throat> and that is going to be the last battle of, uh, <clears throat> of the round. And then we are going to go into the final round. So there we go. China is going to secure a victory in this battle, securing a tie overall in the match. And we'll have a look at the standings right now as the battle finishes. Let me see. So the standings are now with the Chinese tie. Uh, well, Russia is 
going to be in sole possession of the first place as they're getting one point from that but Ukraine is still yet to face um, <clears throat> Actually, yeah, France is facing against Ukraine, and then Poland-Spain is the last match of the round, actually. So yeah, that was the first match of the round. So that, I, yeah, I know something was not adding up there. So yeah, Russia, first place so far. 10 points, 3 victories, 1 tie, 0 losses. China is still going to hold on to third place, with now with 5 points, 1 victory, 2 ties, 1 loss. Spain, that is still yet to play in this round. Fourth place. Um, with three points, one victory, zero ties, two losses. So if Spain wins against Poland, they would overtake China and we would be with six points in the third place. And Poland is also going to look to defeat Spain to then have uh, take, uh, take over Spain with four points against three of the Spanish team, their first victory of uh, the tournament. But well, it's all just speculation of what may happen. The point is, well, the two top teams are pretty much locked in. I don't even think, yeah, there's no mathematical chance for them not to qualify. So the Ukraine and Russia are pretty much locked in. I haven't really done the actual math, but from the looks of it, they can't really be taken over by all the other teams to be knocked down, uh, knocked out of the playoffs. So yeah, Ukraine and Russia locked in. Probably I should have said that uh, before at the end of the previous round. But nonetheless, yep, they are locked in in uh, the playoffs they still might not just advance from the first place but well we'll see about that no, uh, I mean it's between Ukraine and Russia who's going to advance from the first place and yeah China Spain Poland and France all can still make it out of the group phase depending on how the battles between them go speaking of that France and Ukraine is next so that is going to be next week in the meantime, you can help bring back Total War Arena back to the West, back to set twice, but whatever. You know what to do. And until then, I'll see you on Arena's Battlefields Commanders.